Chow 97 at the box. Keisha Nicole hanging out with you. I got a special guest in here. Very, very um, inspiring story. And, and, and so interested to hear about his journey. Um, former Houston Texan who actually retired earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Andre Howe, how, how you doing? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for thank you for coming through. I want to start here because you're 26, right? 27. You're 27 now, but at, 27, at 26 yeah. is when you learned you had cancer. Yeah. I want to talk about an article that I read, and, and it said, I can't just be doing... Let me make sure I said this right. I can't just be collecting no check. Nah. Let's, let's unpack there. Let's talk about that. Okay. <laughs> when you found out you had cancer, mm-hmm. um, you you went through recovery a different way than everybody else will. I see that you um, purchased like some type of... Was it a chamber? Hyper- hyperbaric chamber. Hyperbaric chamber. Yeah. Um, did you go through chemo? No, nah, I didn't go through chemo. Wow. Yeah. And then you did a lot of meditation, yoga, and, and, and is that what helped you recover? Yeah, and uh, one more thing, uh, vitamin C IVs. I watched a documentary called Cancer Can Be Cured or Cancer Can Be Killed. It was on uh, Amazon. And they were talking about in Germany how, like, they don't they don't use chemo. They use vitamin C, like, infusions, like vitamin C drips. You ever, like, yeah, drip yeah, you, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's what I used. I did that twice a week for five weeks, and I was healthy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So, so there's so many people that have cancer right now, and they go Definitely. through. I mean, they're on all these meds, and I feel like yeah. I say this sometimes because I know people who have passed away from cancer. Those meds, um, mm-hmm. to me, sometimes, you know, put you further into cancer, and I don't want to say kill you, but. Sometimes that can happen because it's too much for your body, but mm-hmm. you actually took a different route. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I did my research. Yeah. That's one thing I did because I'm I was a football player, so I needed my body. And I didn't want to like, have like a body breakdown because I seen what chemo did to people. And I'm like, no, I can't I can't go that route. So I did so much research. I did I Google, YouTube. Like, they, it's so much information like in the world that you mm-hmm. can really access just looking for it. So I went seeking and I found it and uh, healed myself basically just doing natural things and like, Talking to different people yeah. and just going to different people, just just going and seeking, seeking and finding information, uh, heal myself. Did you ever think though you would be back on the football field after you were diagnosed? Yeah, definitely. I told them. I told them uh, because they diagnosed me in May. We were going through OTAs and uh, the coach was like, "Yeah, we were talking back and forth." I said, "No, I want to tell the team, and I want to tell the team in front of the team." And I'm saying, "I'm I'm coming back." I told the whole team I'm coming back, and they were like, "Wow, okay, Dre, okay." But I knew in my heart, like, "No, I'm coming back and play this year." I just knew it. It just like it was in my, it was in my spirit. Like, no, hey, no, I'm not. I'm not letting this like take over my life. Like, mm-hmm. no, I'm coming back, and came back. What What in football helped you fight cancer? Like some of the things that because you know in football you're competing mm-hmm. and, and you're constantly fighting. You know what yeah. I mean? Trying to get to the next level, trying to get better. Um, what did you take from football that helped you fight cancer? Um, just coming in as a seven round pick. You know, seven round, mm-hmm. first round, third round, all of, all those picks. I was like the last round. Like last pick almost, you know what I mean. So I had to get out the mud from like just from, from the beginning of my career. So that made just that just built the pers- perseverance inside of me. Like okay, well if I can do that, I can I can be cancer. I just gotta figure out a way to do it. Just like I figure out a way to like to make the team or to get a new contract. Like it's just you gotta figure out ways to get to your next level, and that's what I did. So so then you find that you have cancer. Then something else happened. Your father passed away. Mm-hmm. So you're you're fighting cancer, and this happened. Like yeah. what kind of what space were you in? I took I took my like I took myself like to a whole nother level of of, of awareness because I was doing so much to heal myself that when my, my when my father passed I was like like not gone like I was still here but like I was like so far like gone from like just detached like, from I was detached the body, from a yeah. lot of things because mm-hmm. I was just so like focused on getting back on the field and focused on getting back like healing myself that whatever was going on around me wouldn't didn't really matter it mattered like it matters now like I miss my dad but mm-hmm. at the same time. I was just so gone. I couldn't even like think about what was, what was like going on at that time. Really? Yes, I was just so locked into like getting better. So you just really didn't process it. I didn't really process when it. When did it really time. hit you though? It hit me uh, once I got back on the field, and that's when I, I decided like I needed to. I can't play this no more. That's all. We, that's all we had. Me and my dad. All we had was football. And once he he passed away, and I, once I really came back down off that like that high of uh, beating cancer and doing I was doing all that, the football left. It was crazy. Like the love for football left. So I finished the season. I said, okay, let me let me just see if this really real. So I really, you know, I, I went to LA. I did like an externship in LA. Kind of uh, took my time. Like thought about it. And I came back to Houston. I'm like man, I don't feel right. Like did it feel empty? It felt so empty. Like even when I got back on the field the first time, like something not right. I couldn't and I couldn't put my hand on it back then. I really had to sit down and really like meditate and really think about what was going on in my in my mind. So I was like, yeah, my dad passed, and that's all we had. Like was football like we our relationship was football like he i'm not saying he was the worst dad ever but my mom pretty much raised me and my sister mm-hmm. so 
And when football came around, he was around. You know what I mean? So it was right. that kind of dynamic of football and my dad. Like, right. Dad and hand football. in hand. So if I don't have my fo- my dad, yeah, then like, what is football really to football me? What is football to me? Like, it, was, it my, was it my dream or was it your dream? Wow. You know what I mean? It was crazy. So, and I so realized was it all his not dream. your dream? It, I don't think it was my dream. Do you know what your dream is now? Um, Helping people, man. Yeah. Like, inspiring people. Like, really just lifting people up and showing people that it's possible. Purpose. Yeah, it's, that's my purpose, I think. And I had to go through all that to figure that out. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. So when you made the decision to retire, what was like the deciding factor? I know your father, but like what made it click to you to say, "Hey, I'm going to walk in here and tell them, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this game." You know, it go back to my dad. Like Yeah. I just didn't have the that passion anymore. And, and playing football, you need that passion like. Yeah, you like I so I couldn't well, some guys can go out there and BS or whatever, but that's not who I am. Like when I played, I played like Balls out, you know what I mean. I went, I went hard. Like that was my job. That was my passion. But then when he, when he passed, like that passion went away, and I was like, I can't get back on this field and not have that same passion. Cause I'm not gonna be the same player. Yeah. And it's not gonna be fair to me, first of all, because first of all, I gotta look out for me. And second of all, it's not gonna be fair for the team, the coaches, the fans. So I'm not. I said, I can't, I can't, I can't collect a check. Who was the first person you told? Uh, I told my mom. Okay. What did she say? What's her? She didn't believe me. Really? She I was playing. Yes. A lot of people thought I was just joking about it at first. But like I said, it just when you get to a point in your life when when you really have to do something mm-hmm. and you can't turn back, I couldn't turn back. You know, a lot of times um, identity is an issue when it comes to football players mm-hmm. or athletes because yeah. you've been attached to this one thing that's defined you your entire life. So yeah. if you walk away, it's like, who am I really? And mm-hmm. a lot of people can't process that or a lot of people don't know who they are outside of what they do outside of playing football. Yeah. Um, were you ever afraid of like ha- had the identity issue walking away? Like, will people still mess with me? Will people still love me? You know, like I said, going, going through that cancer diagnosis, that's when I, I, was, I was out of football for six months. Yeah. So that's that was the time when I where I seen it. I said, "Wow, like I'm normal. I'm a human. Like I'm just I'm a regular I'm a regular person. Like, I'm a regular guy. And they treat me like a regular guy yeah. now. Like I'm not on the field right now. So this how it is. And I was like, oh, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. First of all, like football is not who I am. Like yeah. I went to a, a good college. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm capable of doing a lot of things. And that's when I did the externship at uh, Headspace. It's like a meditation app. Oh wow. Yeah, I did the externship there and uh. I started learning stuff about myself. Like I started learning like what I was good at, like what I like to do. Like you didn't I'm, know that you were capable of certain exactly. things. Exactly. I didn't yeah. know I was capable of like doing presentations, like getting in front of people and like talking wow. to people and like giving presentations. I'm like, I don't do this. Yeah. But I can do that. You know what I mean? I just d- never had like the the want to to do it. Like mm-hmm. I didn't need to. I was just playing football. And I, I was just so locked into the football, like a lot of people do. Like, that's your identity. Like yeah. and it kind of makes you seem like, oh, I'm just a football player. Right. That's all I, that's all I need to do. Yeah, like the crazy thing is, I remember reading about you taking that externship yeah. at um at Headspace in L.A. And I thought to myself, like, what is the power of meditation for somebody? Like, it literally allows you to finally just be still, right? Yeah. And for you, just keep going, just going. Either I'm going to practice, I'm going to like, getting ready for games. It allows you to just kind of just sit down and kind of think. Like, mm-hmm. what is the power of meditation to you, particularly? Like you said, just being able to sit there and just really not think, but you actually think, but you're not, you're trying like not to think, mm-hmm. but you, you're in, you're in a space where it's like, okay, I'm going to sit here and be quiet and I'm going to let these thoughts bubble up in my head and I'm going to see what's coming up in my head and I'm going to let them go. And then the stuff that keep coming up, that's, that's what's really going on in my, in my mind. Like that's what's going on in my head. Like, let me, let me, uh, let me see what's really going on in my head and then attack that first and then go ahead and like live my life. So like I said, when, when I start, really sat down and meditated mm-hmm. and my dad passed, like, oh, that's that's why I want to play, cause like, he not here no more. Like right. stuff like that, you can really start going deep inside you instead of like just living your life like not knowing what's going on, mm-hmm. like drifting through life. I I, st- I want to stop drifting. I'm not drifting anymore. I know mm-hmm. I know my purpose now, mm-hmm. and you can know your purpose if you just sit down and be quiet. And that's what happened. Now, were you a meditator before this all happened? Did mm-hmm. you meditate prior? Because yeah. I know a lot of black men um, do, of a certain class don't meditate. Yeah. Not to say like, but but where I'm from, like you ain't going to the hood or you're not going to um, underprivileged communities, and and they're teaching you meditation, yeah. you know. But it was something that you did every day. Oh, uh, I did. Well, it actually started like probably three years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, I was just doing like just on Google, just research and stuff because uh, I wanted to be better in football. I'm like, okay, well, how can yeah. I how can I get an edge on on all these other and guys? And yoga's good for that. And too. yoga yeah. too. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to get an edge. I was like, how can I get an edge? So I was like googling stuff, and I was seeing meditation. And yoga. So I was like, okay, let me look into this meditation stuff. Then I downloaded the um, the Headspace app, and I started doing it. And I started reading a lot of books, self-development books. Like, you listen to um, 
Jim Rohn, you know, different like different motivational speakers, different inspirational speakers that like changed my mindset about life. And once I started doing that, I saw my mind start like switching. Mm -hmm. I saw like I saw like different stuff start happening for him, like sign a new contract. You know, stuff start happening yeah. for him, like wow, like yeah. this stuff really happening for him, like the law track stuff, but it's like real life stuff. Like mm -hmm. I'm really attracting stuff into my life now by just doing like believing in myself, basically, like not having those bad thoughts, those negative self-talk, all that crap that was going on in my head, yeah. I kind of shut it down by having putting the right stuff into my brain, putting the right stuff into my body, reading the right material, reading the right things. And once I start doing that, my life started changing. And then when the cancer hit, they're like, you got cancer? I said, what? You say, you got cancer? I said, okay, bet. All right, what's next? My mind, my, everybody's looking at me like, what? Like, why are you not flipping out? Why are you not tripping? I'm like, I'm not tripping because I'm not afraid. I wasn't afraid of anything. And then I'm like, what's next? Like, okay, what? What can we do? And when they said chemo, I said, nah, I'm straight. I'm not doing that. Oh, you told them off the back. You're I'm not saying, no, chemo. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I was in the hospital for two days, and I was like, yeah, you got to do chemo. I'm like, really? Like, I'm fine. I walked in here. So wait, did you have sim symptoms? I had blurry vision. Oh. Yeah, I had some blurry vision. Stuff was going on in my brain. A bunch of stuff was going on, whatever. So I went to the doctor, and um, they're like, yeah, you got this going on. You got that going on. And they just kept running tests, and running tests, running tests, taking, taking all my blood. I was in the hospital for like almost a week. Yeah, just sitting there, they running tests, running tests, running tests. And I'm like, man, I got to get out of here. And yeah. then they finally came up with the diagnosis. Okay, well, I got to go. So I left and just kind of started doing my own thing. That's yeah. nuts. That is nuts. You were saying earlier about how when you signed that second contract, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm on. Yeah. And we hear, like, a lot of rookies and a lot of, like, you know, vets now, like, either they're holding out or they're trying to get that back. Mm -hmm. what, what's the wildest thing you purchased on that second contract? Wildest thing? My house. I said, I want a house. Yeah. And that's what a lot of guys don't do. A lot of guys think, okay, I'm about to get this Bugatti. I'm mm -hmm. about to get this fancy car. I'm like, yeah. nah, let me, let me go get this house right quick. I'm saying, I, I got a car. Like, I'm good on yeah. a car. Let me go get this house. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I didn't like, just go blow it on some expensive car. I'm yeah, like, something that really depreciates values. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I bought me a house. So I live in it now. Like, I live in Houston now. It's my home now. So that's why I would recommend guys do. Like, don't go buy the big old car. Go buy your nice house, man. There's no value in in that. Yeah, like go go really like do something that, and help people. Like I yeah. I help my city, help my school. Like yeah. I help, I help people that helped me when I was growing up. Yeah. Like do stuff like that. But it's hard when you come from nothing. Yeah, and, and you, get you that finally much, got. It's like oh, I'm about to go ham. And then yeah. not only that, I mean, when you were drafted in the seventh round and you got around the guys that had the millions, mm -hmm. you didn't have that just yet. Yeah. Did you feel the pressure to 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 I gotta I gotta get this because I gotta keep up with these guys in the oh, locker yeah, room? Definitely, definitely, you feel that because you're an NFL, you're a, you're a professional football player yeah. now, so you gotta look the part, you gotta talk the part, you gotta like walk around <laughs> like you you know you the man. But yeah. after I, I kind of got through all that part, I'm like you know what, I'm just me. Yeah. And I, that's why I was able to, to retire and be like, okay, I can I can walk away from this because it, it wasn't who I am. Like a lot of guys don't want to walk away from the fame, from the all the women, the all these. All, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I don't really care about all that. And that. I was able to do it. That's so awesome. Do you feel like a, a certain obligation to um, just kind of speak with some of the other athletes, even though like younger athletes, about like the journey through football? Because you you quit at like when you you didn't have to in your you prime you basically still, in yeah. your prime you could have kept going do you feel like an obligation to talk to like the younger guys about like their identity or anything that they're going through when it comes to football yeah because definitely. of what you've been through yeah definitely even when i was still there i was talking to the younger guys like you know like save your money you know do right by your money like don't don't just splurge on stuff that you don't need you know mm -hmm. what i mean like just really take care of yourself because after this football over with they really gonna be like, okay, we done with you. Yeah, and that's how it is. It's, it's no, the it's minute, no problem. The minute yeah. it ends, the minute it ends, they done with you. People are done with you. Yeah, and it's like you gotta be ready for that. So mm -hmm. you don't don't try to build yourself up to the point where like, oh, I'm the man. I'm this. I'm that. These people love me. Alone. They love. They love what you do. They don't love you. They love what you do. And a lot of guys get that confused sometimes. Like, nah, I was, I was with the Texans. Okay, yeah, they love when I was with the Texans. Now it's like, okay, that's Andre. All right, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you gotta be okay with that. And some guys don't ever be okay with that, and they end up like just going through depression and going through this different stuff depression they gotta go through. Majorly. Cause they just they they think they people are in love with them. No, they in love with what you do. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. So so did you formulate a plan post football career? Yeah, definitely. What was I that plan? Gonna, I wasn't gonna retire without without, without <laughs> a plan. Like I say, you, you, they, they give you not give you, you you deserve that money. Like these guys deserve what they get. Mm -hmm. So when you go from that to you know living a normal life now, or whatever, like you have to have a plan and. I was like reading, like I said, reading different books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I'm in real estate now. Okay. I got my real estate license. So yeah, I, I went, oh. I hopped right into it. Bought a couple of properties. I just jumped right into it. I didn't want to like take a year off. I'm like, okay, I'm retired. I'm going to kick my feet up. Say, mm -hmm. nah, I got I to gotta get to work. So so you have an event coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a back to school. Yeah, back to school event back in my hometown, uh, Port Allen, Louisiana. 
just giving back to the to the to my city, man. Yeah. Like I, I love my city. Uh it's not the biggest city, not the, the the richest city, but they got a lot of people in my city that like they need mm-hmm. help, you know. What I mean, I, and I go back to help, and I just like letting those kids see me like in person, like okay, he made it so I can make it too. You you seem like you're the type of uh, friend that pour into your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always encouraging your friends. You have people around you that because I always find that people that encourage people have a hard time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, have a hard time being surrounded by people that's pouring into them because mm-hmm. you can't pour from an empty cup, so you have to have those people yeah. around you. Do you have kind of a yeah, good... yeah? Def- First of all, my mom, she like she the she the she the, she the man. Like she she the man. You know what I mean? Like she the man. You know what I mean? Yeah. She really instilled in me like that that worth ethic, like that discipline. That like, hey, you gotta you gotta get it out the mud just because like how she did it. Like she had three kids on her own. You know what I mean? Like she didn't have millions of dollars to take care of us. You know, she did what she had to do. She a beautician. Mm-hmm. So she worked all day. Yeah, no insurance. No, hey, no, 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 four one k plan, yeah. none of that. She worked all day. You know what I mean? Just to make so we we had food on the table. So just so just seeing her do that made me want to just go even harder. Yeah. Like even though like you fully pulled yourself away from the game, mm-hmm. is there anything you miss? Like the roar of the crowd? I say being with your teammates, hitting hitting somebody. I'm pretty sure you miss hitting Blake Borders or <laughs> somebody on the Jags. <laughs> But uh, nah, nah. Actually, I'm 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 in boxing now. Like I go to the gym uh, in uh, in West U called uh, it's Luce. I won't say his last name. I won't mess it up. Hmm. But Savarese, Luce Savarese. He was an old boxer. Yeah, back yeah, in the day. A, yeah. I was like, he fought George Foreman back yeah, in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he real cool guy, man. Yeah. I love his gym. I go there pretty much every day, and that's like I get my fix from hitting stuff. Ah, okay. But uh, what what did you ask? I was just oh yeah, what I miss? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm miss. Oh teammates for sure. Like yeah. the football that camaraderie. Part, yeah, man, I'm, I'm. I got tired of hitting people, man. <laughs> the football part, I'm straight on that. I'm. I, this is the camaraderie, like just hanging out with J. Joe, you know, Kareem Jackson, J. J. You know, uh, Whitney Merciless, those kind of guys. I, I kind of grew up with though. You know, it's yeah. weird because like it was only five years, but it felt like fifteen. Yeah, because you around you around them so much. You know, you get to know each other. You get to know each other, family. So that's the problem. That's the problem I miss the most, like yeah. just being around those guys. I, I want to ask you, I want to talk a little bit about football and, like, things that are coming up this season. And we see Ezekiel Elliott sitting out because he mm-hmm. wants the money that, you know, he should get. Yeah. Or last year, Le'Veon Bill. How do you feel about when players do that now? Uh, You have to. Yeah. I feel like they they, they, got, they know they worth. Like, they know they worth. Like, hey, I'm out here really, like, risking my life. You see what happened to Ryan Sager? Like, he was paralyzed for, like, a couple months. Like, you couldn't walk, like. In a given play, you can go out there and really, like, get get, get paralyzed, like, break a limb. Like, why not go out there and you're going to pay me what I'm worth because you getting what y'all worth. Mm-hmm. Right. Y'all making billions. You know what I mean? Y'all getting all the bread. So why can't get mine, too? So I can take care of my people and take care of myself after football. Because right. I went to New York probably a couple of week, a weeks ago, and I met, like, a bunch of NFL legends. And those guys are beat up. Like, knees, like, yeah. knee replacements, shoulder replacements. Like They do not have legs like Meg Thee Stallion whatsoever. <laughs> it, no, whatsoever. Yeah, their legs are done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Their legs are done. You know what I mean? So they, they play 15, 12, 15 years. Like, you know what that dude does to your body? Like, yeah. you we're not built to run into each other and hit each other. You're right, not built for that. I heard it sound, I heard it's like... Being in a car wreck. Somebody told me, a football player told me, like, yeah. you being hit by someone else yeah. is, like, equivalent to getting in a car wreck. Exactly. Yep. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like some day gladiator in and day stuff, out, And a lot of y'all been doing this, like you said, since you were, like, eight yeah. years old. Yeah. <laughs> so just imagine what your body goes through. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's definitely tough. It's nuts. Like, I know this. As somebody who grew up in the Madden era, playing video games, like, oh, yeah. like, dead, just, like every day, Madden come out. And it's the main thing, like, it does the same thing with 2K. When Air mm-hmm. 2K ratings come out and the Madden ratings come out, players are like, yo, why am I rated so low? Yeah. Like, did you ever feel like that? I mean, you played in the league five years, so yeah. basically you saw your, you was like, say, yeah. oh, snap, I'm in a video game, exactly. bro. Exactly, it's crazy. Like, do you feel upset whenever you got short on your ratings? Oh, definitely, <laughs> man. You put too much work in not to have, not to be really highly rated, man. Like, I go in there, I come back, I get three interceptions off six games. Like, I should be a, a 90 already, you know what I mean? <laughs> I should be already up there. Yeah. But it, I, it, it kind of go out who you are. You know, it's just, it's, Politics, it's life. Yeah, it goes who you are, like how many followers you got, how many people you can interact with. Like mm-hmm. some guys are really that good, and some guys just got a lot of fame. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it is. I still say Andre House should have been rated at eighty-seven at least, that's off easy, the fact man. that he he won Air Block Courage Award. Got <laughs> must say got yeah. three interceptions off six games. Must say give that man his respect. Put some respect right. on Put that man's name. Right. It's all good. No, it's all good. <laughs> Andre Howe, thank you so much for coming through on no the show. Problem. We appreciate it. I wanted to ask you for anyone that's going through cancer, would you have any advice for them? Because they don't know where to start and they don't want to go through the chemo mm-hmm. and put that much um, you know, pressure and stuff on their yeah. body. Um, first of all, you gotta uh have faith. 
first of all, I gotta have faith that you're gonna beat it. You gotta convince yourself that you you gonna live. That's first of all off, off the bat, cause any medicine like it's, it's all in your mind after that. Like you really gotta take over your mind, mm -hmm. and once you take over your mind, you'll be fine. But then do your do your research. Like don't just listen to what the doctor said, cause he a doctor. He don't know your body. Like mm -hmm. everybody is unique. Everybody's like their own person. So this this doctor can't tell you exactly what's going on in your body. So you need to know like okay, well this is how I feel. So this is I'm not I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Just cause you say that I don't want to do that. And, like, and doctors get so much like like a. So much like power over people because they got that white coat on, but it's like a, power. a lot of people just I can go to school to be a doctor, but like they don't don't mean I know everything. Right. So they don't know everything. And they'll tell you that they're like, I don't know everything, but I recommend you do this. So you know, you know what? I, I recommend myself that I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. instead of like just listen to whatever you say. Yeah. Cause a lot of people don't like kind of fight for they fight for their own body. They just oh, I'm, I'm gonna pop this pill because it's easy. It's easy. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. easy just to pop a pill or to take this medicine and, and go by your way, but then you in the system forever. Because you never really healed. Mm -hmm. I'll never have cancer again in my life. Definitely, I'll never have cancer again. Because you healed Cause the I right know. way? Because I know. I healed the right way, and I, I didn't put all that poison in me. Because it's, it's a system, it's just, man. It's just mm -hmm. a, yeah, it's a cycle. It's a constant cycle. Mm -hmm. People, you, you get cancer, oh, then it goes away. Then you get it again, then it goes away. Like, why does it keep coming back? Because your immune system is weak as hell. You know what I mean? Like, people don't understand how your body really works. And that poison that they put in your body, they call medicine, is not really healing. You're just masking the system for a little while. Mm -hmm. But it's going to come back. And there's so much information out there. I'm not saying there's enough information for you to say I can cure myself, but I know there's a lot of information out there that you can find on the internet yeah. or speak to different people about on how you should heal um, from from cancer or like just about anything. There's anything. something out there. Yes. The natural Because somebody way. Didn't did it. Because somebody somebody's didn't did done it. Already. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming through. Appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you for having me. Where can they follow you? Oh, yeah. Dre Howe 29 on Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm not really on Snapchat. I'm on Facebook every now and then for my mom because she <laughs> likes, you know, the moms like Facebook. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Jerry Howe, 29. And uh, yeah, that's it.